everyone, welcome to another episode of Contact Close. I'm Joker again, and uh, this time uh, my guest is Asarnil. Hey, man. Hey, how are you? I'm all right, thanks. And you? All good. Good stuff. Uh, we haven't had you on for a while, uh, but uh, this is about to change today, as uh, you are the TO of our first Arcs of Omen GT in Poland. Is that right? That's exactly correct. Okay, so uh, what can you tell us about the tournament? How many people are going? Uh, what are we playing? All that kind of jazz. Mm -hmm. All right, so this is our annual Toruns um, tournament, Dice Crusher, which uh, is um, a tradition here in uh, in, in Toruń. Uh, we organize it every year, almost, and for um, a lot of years already uh, that have uh, passed with uh, our tournament. And usually uh, what stands out for our tournament is that there are some weird rules that we are trying to apply, which is not the case for this one, but uh, um, usually it was uh, we at first we had a uh, format with uh, changing armies, uh, playing uh, first uh, your opponent's army and then your own, the same matchup. Uh, and then uh, we had a an idea to have more battles in uh, during two days of tournament. So we decided to um, go away from from the idea of changing armies, uh, but uh, uh, de decreasing the amount of points in order to get uh, six uh, battles in two days. Mm -hmm. But this time uh, we decided to go with a standard 2K format. Um, the only um, weird thing that we wanted to do, but it's no longer uh, that weird, <laughs> it was when we thought about it, is to go with the win draw loose um, system instead of uh, 20 mm -hmm. And it's no longer uh, weird because uh, we had that format in Warsaw in January, and it seems like a Polish tournament scene is uh, leaning towards this kind of um, system anyway so um here we are it's uh it's a weird thing that we have our dice crusher with some standard rules but um yeah that's uh, I, mean, no. I, I feel like um a couple of years ago and probably before that uh each gt in poland had its own like shtick mm -hmm. Yeah. So it was at least a different amount of points, uh, usually debating from the from the norm, but we seem to be going away from that in general. Um, do you have an opinion on that? Uh, I mean, is it a good thing, a bad thing, a boring thing? What do you think? Well, um, I think it's okay, but it is a sign of a something bad in our uh, 40k system, which is a amount of rules that we already have. I think the reason why uh, in the past we had different interesting formats of the tournament was that overall the uh, the rules and the amount of uh, things in codexes uh, were quite um, manageable. And now with all the new factions and uh, a ton of uh, you know rules, stratagems, warlord traits, uh, Army of Renowns and all that stuff. It's so difficult to uh, get uh, our heads around it. Then, um, you know, uh, complicated it um, again with different tournament rules would be an overkill, in my opinion. And that's why we are <laughs> leaning more towards uh, standard 2K, but also probably because uh, popularity of competitive play. Uh, based on WTC is uh, much more uh, relevant in in Poland at least. I think we are all, um, you know, observing the WTC um, tournaments uh, closer than uh, we did in the past, and uh, you know the whole discussion around uh, our representation and uh, all the national team is uh, much more um, active in in our community, and that's why we are kind of one. We kind of want to play the same game as they they do, maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, no, I think I I totally agree with uh, with that. Um, okay, so onto the tournament itself. We've got um, forty four attendees. Correct. And uh, the faction spread 
is more or less as follows. So we've got nine Space Marines. Uh, so quite a lot of them. Haven't seen them for a long time. Uh, six Eldari. So that's both Harlequins and Craft Worlds together. And I think that divides into um, two Craft Worlds and two Harlequins I think players. So. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying. I'm just skimming through the list now. And then we've got uh, four custodies, four Astromitarum or Imperial Guard, uh, however you want to call them. Uh, three Demons, three Imperial Knights. I think there's like three or four Death Guard. They're like the next most popular faction on that list. Mm -hmm. um, there's ooh, one Gene Steeler Cult, one Votan, one Chaos Space Marines, one. Uh, Orc player, uh, two Tau lists, and I think uh, 1,000 Suns and one Grey Knights. Something I think that's along I think those that's two uh, thousand Suns because I know that uh, our um, uh, original player um, Shkapa is playing against uh, another Magnus, so I think that too. Oh yes, yes, I can see this, the second one now. I couldn't find him earlier on. Uh, but yeah, you're right, 2,000 suns and uh, two Drukari, I think I haven't mentioned uh, in in uh, that uh, list. Yeah, I think we've got it all now. So uh, what do you think of that faction spread? Um, well, surprised by the amount of Marines? Well, yeah, I'm, I mean, a little bit surprised, but I, I have to say first that I'm super proud that in, in Torun, uh, in Torun, Torrent's tournament, there are a lot of Death Guard players, and that's uh, <laughs> for me personally very important, even though I'm not playing. So, if I would, then we will have even, even bigger more. representation, exactly. Um, but besides that, um, it's it's no wonder that we have uh, more Space Marines. They uh, have uh, been buffed recently. I still don't um, think that the buffs were enough uh, for them to see a, a big competitive play but it turns out that it was enough for the community to um to go with uh, more marine marines oriented uh, uh, rosters and that's good because i think uh, they were definitely um underrepresented uh, before oh and, yeah definitely you know uh, space marines this is you know warhammer 40k world and there sh there should be a lot of space marines since uh, it's uh, you know it's the main thing of of, uh, of this universe, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I'm happy with that. Uh, uh, I'm not very happy with uh, the fact that there are some factions that uh, are totally absent, and it's super weird because there are no Tyrannis players in uh, in, on, in Dice Crusher. There are no Sisters of Battle. There are no um, Necrons, which is completely. Uh, surprising because not only That's I true. think Necrons are uh, still quite stable army, but with Windrow loose they should have a little bit of advantage um, trying to win the tournament. So yeah, and it's an army from the starter box, and th those factions are usually quite popular. That's true. So it's super weird that uh, we have no no Necrons. Um, but yeah, besides that, uh, it's uh, it seems like uh, well that there is a domination of space marines, but it, it's kind of normal, and uh, the rest of the factions um, are quite evenly spread out. I, I don't I don't think there is anything super weird. I r really expected more uh, imperial guard players, especially uh, that there is kind of a perception right now that uh, imperial guard is so broken with all the caster um, kings. Uh, Mm -hmm. uh, combos and, and stuff, but uh, only four of them, so not not that many, which oh. is surprising. Ten percent is, I think, expected. Uh, I mean, it's not uh, an amount that is particularly surprising, and uh, like the usual, what, what mm -hmm. you'd expect. Where, whereas, as you say, with the, with the power level of the codex currently, you'd expect more people to bandwagon in on them mm -hmm. um but yeah speaking of the absentees uh necrons are definitely a surprise as you say um sisters as well although i feel like they're not that popular uh 
generally in Poland. Uh, I don't think there are that many sisters players. And uh, who else are we missing? I know who we're missing. We are missing world eaters who are officially um, oh, ready yeah. to play. Uh, because the cutoff uh, was after the mm -hmm. Codex release, and nobody decided to go for them. I'm I'm really disappointed, to be honest. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, I mean, it's a faction that's got good secondaries, and they could definitely compete. Uh, although maybe it's just, you know, getting them uh, ready model-wise uh, was too much of a challenge. True, yeah. Um, in terms of uh, Space Marines, uh, I think that the majority of them are actually Dark Angels or Iron Hands. And uh, don't you think those factions are also a bit, well, strong right now? It seems like uh, that those way. Those chapters in particular. Yeah, they definitely have uh, everything in their kit right now that uh, should make them quite a powerful armies. I mean, Iron Hands, we already seen them uh, in the past with uh, when uh, Repulsors were uh, the nightmare. <laughs> and But, you know, it's it's, it's really a, a, a skewed um, um, faction. You only have uh, strong uh, shooting and uh, uh, you're hard to kill, but nothing <laughs> interesting happening there uh, besides that. I, I, at least that, that's my perception. Uh, and Dark Angels, man, they're, they're just better death cards, it seems like now, that with, with all the super um, resilient Terminators and with good shooting from uh, the Raven, I think Ravenwing, right? Um, mm -hmm. Yep. So, so, and they definitely fit the meta quite well uh, with all the um, anti-tank uh, shooting that they have at their disposal, and very mobile uh, shooting at that. So I'm not surprised. I, I still don't think... I mean, I didn't see the secondaries that they have right now, if they if, if that helps them with the Arcs of Omen um, uh, changes. Uh, but I would imagine that um, what will decide on if the code, if this two factions are really that strong is the fact if they have good secondaries because if not you know it, that they will probably struggle a little bit well they've got codex warfare which is 15 points pretty much for, for both dark angels and uh, and iron hands i think and uh, i'm not really sure about the the other two i think oaths are still a thing and uh mm -hmm. If there's anything else, well, uh, the Terminators, Dark Angels ones, they've got OPSEC, so they've got a good primary game and are hard to shift, as you've mentioned, the Resilience. So, um, yeah, I think at least one of them should place uh, quite high, you'd mm -hmm. expect, I think. Uh, I'm actually surprised that there's only one Leagues of Votan player. Uh, I still think like that's a faction that offers quite a lot of damage output and is fairly solid in general and also seemed like a lot of people are looking into it in terms of you know um, the amount of players and it's quite popular uh are there a lot of votan players uh, around in Toruń? not at all i didn't play any uh, local player um, playing league of votan and that's both in Toruń and bydgoszcz uh, like mm -hmm. at all i didn't see even you know uh, playing in in local tournaments uh, lately in Bydgoszcz, I didn't see any um, Votan player um, at all in the tournament. So I don't think we just don't we, ju we don't just have it uh, them uh, in uh, in our region. Okay, which, which is surprising again because it's not only quite a strong army but also an army that uh, has a specific. Um, um, you know, think uh, around them uh, with the Space Dwarves. A lot of people were drawn in, f into them um, at the yeah, very exactly. beginning. Of yeah, that's, that's what I meant. So, uh, it comes to me as a bit of a surprise. And uh, only one Orc player, hmm. which is also surprising, I think, because Orcs are pretty strong. They've got solid secondary game. Uh, so, everything that you might need. And, come on, Orcs are also a fairly popular faction. 
They are, and actually the the, the last local tournament in Bitgosh was won by a Orc player, which was super surprising as well. Yeah, exactly. So where are you, Orc players? <laughs> Why are you not at Dice Crusher? Um, anyway, and uh, Custodies also being quite popular uh, for people as much as Astromare Tarum, but actually I think uh, not everyone's running the 20 Wardens. Have you had the chance to play against that list? Not yet, no. no. I heard that it, it's quite popular. I think it won something in the US uh, lately. In right? Australia. Oh, Australia, okay. Mm. And that probably that's why the popularity rose a little bit. Uh, but Custodies uh, were actually quite popular in our region. I, we have at least uh, one local player in, in Torun. Um, and uh, I think two or three even in, in Bitgosh, so uh, quite a big representation for, for Custodies. Yeah, yeah, I also get that thing that here in the Tri-City area, Custodies are a popular faction and uh, <laughs> wherever you look, you you see mm. a Custodies player in there. Um, and uh, I had, again, scrolling through those lists, I had one other faction I wanted to mention before going to death card itself uh, gene stealer cult also strong and also only one player but uh again i think like sisters they're not generally super popular around in in poland um warrior yeah. observations definitely I, I i would say that it's uh they're even less popular than than sisters i think that they're just a handful of players in whole uh, country that uh, plays them regularly. And I think it's because it, they are kind of weird army, right? I mean, in a positive way, but uh, mm -hmm. uh, difficult to, to master, I would say. Uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, so maybe that, that's the reason. Uh, but a nice army. I, I, would, I would love to see more of them in, on the tables. Mm. And uh, <laughs> looking at who's bringing uh, Gene Stealer code, so that's Goggy, uh, it only now occurred to me that there's uh, zero AdMech players. That's true, yeah. Uh, I, and I think it's another zero showing for the faction. So uh, looks like despite any changes in Arcs of Omen, they're still struggling to see any tables. And that's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just Why? having, you know, a uh, still a, a trauma after uh, their domination. Mm -hmm. It was like when two years ago. Around yeah, that yeah, two years ago, I think already now. Uh, yeah, but flashbacks. still hurts. Yeah. <laughs> uh, flashbacks. Um, right. So okay, uh, Death Guard. I think mm -hmm. that's something that should interest you. Uh, why don't you tell us about the Death Guard roasters? I'm sure that you can say a lot about them. Sure, let me just find them and look at them. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so uh, Death Guard, um, in my opinion, at least still uh, is struggling and trying to, to get into competitive uh, armies, but uh, the road is definitely not an easy one. Uh, since it is it, it, the the codex becomes really really old already, and there are just you know the, all the new uh, codexes have so many uh, cool things and uh, um, new um, approach from um, Games Workshop seems to um, arise there with you know all the combos and a lot of possibilities to. Um, to get uh, some cool new rost rosters uh, to, to test and so Death Guard, I think, still suffers from um, from the fact that it's an old codex. We have some old stuff in there and they're just not um, strong enough to compete with the with the new codexes. But, you know, we're still, as, as Death Guard players, we still try to figure it out. And I have to uh, give a shout out to our uh, Death Guard uh, Discord, uh, at least a, a part of uh, our 40 k Discord in Poland. With um, when where we discuss the death card tactics, there are uh, a lot of uh, interesting discussions and uh, ideas uh, flying around how to create a competitive uh, list, but also some fun lists uh, as well. So that that's great. Um, with arcs of omen uh, changes, I would say they're all good. Uh, besides losing 
uh, armor of contempt, which hurts actually much more than I expected. Um, mm -hmm. You know, having um, anything with uh, AP one and two now hurts much more than before, and that means that uh, even though plague marines uh, were uh, discounted by two points and now cost only 19 uh, they're just die much much quicker and uh, with uh, even you know everything went down in points like uh, uh, plague drones are are cheaper uh, the tanks are cheaper uh, we have uh, free war gear not only on plague marines but also on uh, blight lot terminators mm -hmm. but still uh, the it doesn't compensate the fact that uh, everything just dies quicker, which is a pity. And that's that's my only uh, my only thing that um, um, makes uh, the army still not too valid, uh, because all the other changes in Arc of Mo Arcs of Women are quite good. Starting with uh, you know the new uh, detachment, which helps a lot if you want to build a, a list based on uh, um, on dreadnoughts, for example, or on uh, drones, uh, without taking uh, uh, too many HQs or too many troops, which is great. I think the changes in uh, uh, strategic reserves also helps a lot uh, because we can now have um, you know a couple of uh, units of uh, Black Marines uh, waiting in reserves, which can help us doing our secondaries, especially the spoiled ground. Um, so there are a lot of, I think, good changes, but still with uh, lack of um, armor of contempt, it is it is definitely a struggle, especially against like Tau or any new armies like uh, Imperial Guard or um, uh, or League of Otan, Right? It's uh, mm -hmm. definitely uh, difficult. Um, I think the overall consensus in in our community uh, for death guard is that uh, a balanced uh, list are the way to go um definitely bringing um some amount of black marines between i think um 15 to 30 um definitely some death shrouds drones are very popular and and uh, quite good a uh, couple of either uh burst crawlers or maybe um inclusion of um, war dogs, which is, I know that uh, Twig is uh, uh, testing them quite in, uh, intensively and uh, likes them quite quite a bit. So that's that's mm -hmm. great. Um, the, ba the big question really uh, when uh, constructing the the list for Death Guard is uh, either to bring uh, Mortarion or not. And that's, you know, that's basically dictates the, the rest of the list because if you bring, at least in my opinion, I think that the lists with Mortarion, they should be much more aggressive, uh, either in terms of shooting, like with the uh, Dreadnoughts, or with uh, uh, combat, uh, bringing more drones, maybe Demon Princes and uh, other combat units. So uh, I think if you bring, if you take um, Mortarion, then you definitely um, want to finish the battle rather quickly or you know just kill the, the opponent or be killed um, and if you don't bring them uh, our Primark then you're probably thinking about a kind of MSU um, list when you have a lot of small units like again six units of five Plague Marines for example a couple of units of three Death Shrouds so smaller uh, units that you can use to, you know, just do secondaries, do primary, and try to win uh, with uh, with points, and not uh, really killing your your opponent. Okay. Mm, and what would you run in the list nowadays? <laughs> well, I have a couple of ideas. Um, in Bitgos, in our local tournament, I uh, run a um, Mortarion less uh, <laughs> list uh, with. Um, uh, I think that was 20 Black Marines and with three drones uh, and some Death Shrouds. So really focused on doing especially secondaries. Um, and I, I really think that it's a good list, uh, definitely competitive, definitely difficult to play because with the 
low movement and um, you know not being so tough as um, um, we think about death cards that should be uh, it is a, a kind of risky game uh, to to try to do all the secondaries but I do have a, a fun list in mind that I think I'll bring to to the, our next uh, tournament in, in Krakow, uh, which is a Death Guard Rush list uh, we'll, with, you know, uh, full aggression, um, <laughs> very 0-1 um, list. Uh, either you win at uh, round 2-3 or you just uh, don't have any... <laughs> uh, figures on, on on the battlefield, and uh, um, I w- I want to bring this list because play, playing the first one uh, I think can definitely bring um, better results, but mm-hmm. also means that you play all three hours of every battle and it's really really <laughs> tiresome. Um, so and and you know bringing this really quick um, uh, win or lose uh, uh, list means that you'll be. Um, uh, finishing your battles in in hour or our hour and a half. That's idea. That's the idea, at least. <laughs> yes, the idea is to play as little for TK as you <laughs> need to. <laughs> well, More time for beer, beer drinking, socialize, and all that. Yeah, kind of jazz. Uh, okay, so let's take a quick walk through the Death Guard lists at least then, and I think then uh, maybe I'll say a word or two about the Demons lists, uh, of which there aren't that many. So starting from the top of Death Guard, who have we got? Scrolling, where is Death Guard, Death Guard, Death Guard? I think uh, 29. Yeah, uh, so Martin. there's Martins bringing the uh, Ferryman sub-faction. And... Hmm. That's an interesting choice. So we have Ferryman, which means that uh, uh, he's planning on increasing uh, aura of uh, probably foul blight spawn to make uh, the enemies not counting as being as uh, charging units in uh, usual normally in six inches, but with Ferryman um, uh, stratagem you can uh, increase that to twelve inches. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have a. Uh, Demon Prince with uh, uh, not nothing really in, uh, interesting, just a Fugaris Helm, just interesting choice. So Fugaris Helm is, I think, the one increasing the uh, the range of auras, or I might be confusing it with the other um, relic. So, but either way, we have two plague casters, which is also interesting. Uh, two uh, units of Plague Marines, um, one Fox Walkers, then we have a Contemptor Dreadnought uh, with Volkite uh, Culverines as usual, but only one, interestingly enough. Then mm-hmm. three times three Death Shrouds, one Taliman with Tollkeeper, of course, for uh, the Dreadnought, two Drones, two Crawlers, and one Rhino. So, again, quite a balanced list. We have everything um here we have uh, a strong uh, deep striking units and a s- and small units which is also quite important you can uh, you know uh, fit them in in some uh, holes that uh, your opponents left uh, we have a good shooting with contempt or dreadnought i'm surprised that uh, it's only one content contempt or dreadnought i think uh, if you bring Taliman with Tollkeeper, you're investing so much in this, in, in buffing core uh, shooting, then at least mm-hmm. two of them uh, would be uh, good, I think, in my opinion, at least. Um, yeah, so very balanced uh, balanced list. Uh, an interesting one, definitely. Okay. Uh, okay. Who else have we got on the list? Death Guard. We have uh, Michal, our local player. Um, and Michal is bringing um, what is the inexorable uh, uh, faction, and the uh, I think the only reason to bring this sub faction is to use their stratagem, uh, which uh, causes the enemy units to have minus two inches uh, charging one of our unit, which is uh, quite okay. I mean, it will be not it it won't be very good against um, you know space marines or uh, Imperial Guard, but it can help in some 
matchups like uh, against demons for example can be quite interesting to you know push back the um the deep strike a little bit uh, further mm -hmm. then we have a proper uh, contemptor setup with uh, three of them and i imagine yes tal taliman with tall keeper so all good here uh, we have uh, three units of four dash routes, uh, also an interesting choice. And actually, I spoke with Michal about uh, this choice, uh, why fours, because it's a really, uh, for me, a weird number. I, I always bring either three to make them cheap and small, or five mm -hmm. to make them re you know, really powerful and hitting like a track. Mm -hmm. But uh, four of them are actually uh, not, not something that I would expect, but it works quite well for Michal. He was really uh, happy with them when uh, he tested this uh, roster in, in Bitkost. So um, a good, uh, interesting choice, definitely. Mm -hmm. And we do have Mortarion. So definitely an aggressive list, much uh, more aggressive than the previous one. Um, and no uh, Black Marines, which is also interesting. Only one a small unit of Poxwalkers, probably to just sit on the, um, um, the, the objective in your deployment zone. And all the other things are either shooting you quite hard with uh, Dreadnoughts and Volkites, or uh, just rushing you with Mortarion and two drones. Um, with flying. So I really like this list. Um, I, I played a similar list in the past with uh, three uh, dreadnoughts. So definitely uh, my seal of approval for this one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, and that brings us to Tweak's dev card list. Uh, as you've mentioned, yeah. he's got two uh, War Dogs uh, executioners uh, as, an, as, as shooting support uh, instead of contemptors, pretty much, because I guess you could. Uh, you probably wouldn't take both the Chaos Knights and the Contemptors because it's a bit of a point sink at that point. Mm -hmm. That's true. And, uh, you know, uh, Tweak is uh, testing uh, his uh, roster quite uh, uh, frequently lately. Uh, I know that uh, he's playing on, on TTS uh, uh, quite often. So I, I know that... Uh, this uh, list of his uh, went through a couple of uh, iterations, so he's definitely, you know, tweaking uh, uh, this <laughs> a, little, a little bit uh, to, 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 to have it uh, much better. And uh, I personally, and, and Tweak knows that, I am not a huge fan of War Dogs in, in Death Card lists. Uh, not that they're weak, they're definitely a powerful shooting unit, for sure. Uh, but I think with the new secondaries, especially uh, vectors, um, not having um, plug weapons uh, on your shooting is, uh, uh, you know, a little bit of a downside. And you, you and we already struggle with uh, uh, our choice of secondaries. So uh, removing one of them from the equation uh, makes it even uh, more difficult. Uh, I think that having uh, now like Plague Boost Crawlers as, as a shooting um, support is uh, more favorable, at least in my view, you know, maybe uh, mm -hmm. I, I might be, of course, uh, wrong about that. Uh, for the rest of the list, uh, still quite a balanced one. Uh, so even though uh, Tweak is bringing Mortarion, uh, uh, he still wants to have uh, a lot of Black Marines, which is good for uh, secondaries and to, to do uh, primaries as well. Uh, he's bringing two um, units of three Death Shout, so small units, uh, probably will be deep striking them, and two uh, um, drones with uh, flesh mowers. Uh, so, um, and also interesting choice with uh, the Sorcerer in Terminator armor, uh, and a choice that I'm also considering for some of my lists. Uh, the yeah. um, good thing is that uh, this kind of sorcerer can just, you know, uh, deep strike in the back with uh, uh, three terminators. And that's something that is quite difficult to uh, to deal with. And uh, with a couple of uh, smites and a couple of mortal wound uh, psychics uh, that he can cast and uh, a free, um, free combi melter that he can bring, uh, it's definitely uh, a, a valid choice right now. Um, because the, the usual plague caster are 
quite good because they're cheap and they're doing pretty much the same job, but uh, they have to go by feet um, uh, to, 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 the, to the opponent, which is uh, painful for, for that card <laughs> very much. And this guy can, you know, just deep strike in the back and uh, or whatever, whatever you you want him to. You need him. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. uh, I think a great uh, great choice. Um, I'm looking at the relics, and I hope that I will see in Twix list uh, uh, School of Glotilla, but it's on a unit of the shroud. Okay, all right, and that's uh, that's a. Uh, a frequent choice uh, among death guards, which I do not um, think is the right one. <laughs> I definitely prefer uh, not to have uh, this call on uh, terminators because uh, usually it's it's very short range. It's only six inches with five inch of uh, movement. You have basically eleven inches uh, to throw mm -hmm. the call. But if you put it on a uh, plaque caster, you can uh, easily. Uh, run a little bit, you know, advance for mm -hmm. a couple of inches and be a little bit closer. Uh, and you don't have to worry about not being able to charge the the, uh, the unit that you're throwing the skull mm -hmm. at. So I really def I really uh, prefer to have the skull on a mage or a demon prince rather mm -hmm. than on the shouts. But I know that uh, uh, people like to put the uh, the skull on on the terminators as well. Mm -hmm. uh it's a bit of a risky choice then, because uh, when do you use it? It's it's at the end of a movement phase yeah. or or in the shooting. Yeah. So yeah. when you drop down, you can't use it unless you run from the table mm -hmm. uh, with those terminators. Then you might have just uh, a little bit less opportunity to to use that relic, and it's pretty solid. Yeah, that's true. So uh, that's a waste. That's why I like it on. Uh, Specifically on um, Malignant Playcaster, because I, I, I tend to have a turn when I decide to, you know, suicide him a little bit. You know, he <laughs> runs uh, straight across the, the table and uh, throws the the skull, then casts a couple of um, of psychic powers, hoping for a seven plus result to to have additional mortal wounds. So a kind of um, you know, a, a turn when I bet on mortal wounds from this one guy, and uh, mm -hmm. you know, the, the output of uh, of damages can be quite high. Really random, of course, but uh, you know, they can he can work um, something out with it. Okay, so um, looking at the uh, attendees, attending factions, uh, how do you rate the chances of death guard? Are there any particularly bad matchups around here? Um, yeah, all of them. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I mean, you know, it's it's uh, unless we are playing some obscure factions, it's now nowadays it's every battle is is difficult. I, I really uh, even playing, you know, um, Space Marines before the uh, the the buffs, uh, it's uh, the, uh, the things can go sideways quite. Uh, fast, so you have to be, be careful with that. Um, Imperial Guard uh, is a well, and any shooting list is a, a difficult matchup, I think, for Death Guard right now, uh, especially uh, if they have a way of making one turn very, very powerful, which is the case definitely for Tau and for uh, Imperial Guards, for Votan as well. So, uh, and that's um, because uh, you know they can kill Mortarion in one turn, which is. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, one quarter of your of your army gone. Um, but uh, I think what uh, plays a huge role in this kind of matchups are the terrains. If the if you're playing on a table that is uh, full of terrains and uh, you have at least a couple of uh, big ruins when where you can hide uh, Mortarion and uh, the drones, then it's it's much easier because you probably will ha still have one turn when you have to go out with everything at once and uh, pray for survival, but mm -hmm. uh, at least you know that won't be two turns which will you will definitely not survive, only only one which is uh, <laughs> crucial. Okay, um, right. So I can speak a little bit about demons, and there are three of us demon players. I say us because I'm also thinking demons, and I've taken a bit of a different approach to the other two guys. So I'm taking three, uh, I'm taking an undivided uh, 
army, first of all. And I'm taking three big guys because Greater Demons isn't exactly accurate as Belakor isn't technically a Greater sure. Demon, uh, even though he's big like one. <laughs> Uh, so I've got a list that's Belakor, Bloodthirster, and Lord of Change with the usual upgrades. And I've got two units of Flesh Hounds, two Skull Cannons, three units of Flamers, an Exalted Flamer, and a Change Caster. Uh, so I think I've got a little bit more killiness than the other guys. But, uh, well, I hope I'm not going to struggle with missions. I wouldn't really want to pair into... MSU style lists, and uh, that's a matchup I've got in round one <laughs> against MSU Grey Knights. So that's gonna be interesting. And uh, uh, the other two lists are purely Zinj Demons. So one has uh, War Dog support, and the other has a ridiculous amount of pink horrors hoping to just be purely annoying uh, to your opponent. And I think that gun lines are going to mm -hmm. struggle with that, with that list, with those oh. horrors saving on freeze and splitting and just being super annoying. How many uh, are there in the, in the list? Four units of pinks and three units of blues. So that's 70 horrors to start with. With the potential to bring like I don't know how many. Uh, mathematically, that's another 15 brimstones from the three units of 10 blues, and uh, I don't think I want to be counting <laughs> how many splits you can get from the pinks. It's 40 pinks that then gives you statistically 40 blues because despite mm -hmm. splitting on force, you get two blues from each pink. Uh, which then translates to another 20 brimstones. So that's uh, ten, that's on average 60, 75 more bodies. Mm. Uh, unless someone does manage to kill him in turn, so probably in melee, uh, then they obviously don't split at that point, just like Necrons don't reanimate when they're killed in a single unit activation. Uh, but yeah, the, the, there is a lot of uh, splitting potential and headache potential for the open end. I really, dis I really like this idea, and I am surprised that there are no lists uh, with even more um, horrors. I would bring like you know, I don't know, six or eight units of uh, pink horrors just and and some uh, uh, counter for, uh, with uh, with combat, maybe. I, I would, I would see. Uh, I would like to, like to see uh, this kind of list. Uh, in, in well, one the of problem them. with demons is that they don't have proper combat counter uh, unless you go with the greater demons. Mm -hmm. uh, so fiends are okay-ish, but then you're breaking your pure zinch, and screamers are just. Hmm. They've got a weird flex for a combat unit with the six up safe and then three attacks hitting on force. The profile is okay. Uh, I mean, it's pretty solid and you can give them plus one to wound for a CP, which is also great. But yeah, just three attacks hitting on force. It's oof. Yeah, all right. Fair. Rough, 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 rough. Uh, and like I said, I mean, if something is getting into combat with those horrors, if it has enough attacks, it, it's going to kill them because mm. uh, morale is also a thing. Uh, so even if you split, you might just then run away. But for gun lines, oh god, annoying. Mm. Uh, let me ask you this: How are the flamers after the nerf? What do you think? Mm. I think they're still an auto include. Really? Uh, yeah. I don't think they're now just the go-to unit to ensure a kill. Uh, but they're still, they're still like. The second best damage dealer after the greater demons. Mm -hmm. They're still reliable. I mean, you can buff them. Uh, they still got that plus one to wound. And uh, just, uh, yeah, enough weight of dice to to be able to put a dent in something. And right. uh, they're one of the few uh, cheap infantry units. So if you want to be doing any actions uh, for secondaries or for, yeah, for secondary or primaries, then uh, flamers are your best option. Hmm, interesting. 
so I, I still rate them very, very highly. And uh, yeah, like I've got three units of five. I think Tabul also has three units of five. Uh, I would take sixes, but I didn't have uh, enough points. And uh, Prozac, how many flamers does he got? Uh, three units of five. So we all have the same 15 flamers in our lists, which right. I think says it all. <laughs> yeah, still co Codex flamers, right? Unfortunately, interesting for me, so it seems. Um, okay, I think we more or less touched um, all of the factions. Um, I guess the one last thing, two last things. Uh, 2000 sounds this, both sporting Magnus. Uh, big surprise. I'm really curious how they're going to do and if Magnus is going to do anything or he'll just keep dying turn one. And uh, I think two favorites uh, coming into the tournament, both with uh, craft worlds, or at least mainly craft worlds in the case of Duda, who's got 800 points of, Har <coughs> of Harleys, sorry. And then Vladi with just 2,000 points of craft worlds. Uh, what do you think of craft worlds then? I, I still cannot figure out this army, to be honest. After the, the new codex release, this is, uh, I, I really have no idea what's going on in this, in this codex. Usually the lists are so all over the place. You have, you know, one unit of that, one unit of that, one unit of these. And there's so many different units doing different things then it's really, I, I really, I still don't know what they do. I know that, you know, scorpions are uh, strong and, you know, when they, they killed like two of my dreadnoughts in turn one, that was a surprise and I, I will definitely remember to <laughs> watch out for them. And I know that uh, Beharot is still uh, like freaking crazy. Um, but besides that, I, I have no idea, man. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, uh, you don't need to have any ideas, but I definitely need to read into that in case I uh, run into one of those guys. Uh, but yeah, it's, an, it's definitely an interesting one. I think there's gaining a bit of popularity with the Harlequin nerfs, because let's remember it's one book, so um, a lot of the times we just see a lot of Harleys rather than Craft Worlds, uh, just because they were the better part of the Codex. So I wonder if we're going to be seeing more craft worlds nowadays and how are they going to fit into the heavy shooting meta that uh, I think we have. I think they should fit quite well, uh, yeah, to be honest, because they're basically very MSU oriented, right? Mm. So, and, and you at least that's that's the theory right that uh, shooting armies struggle a little bit with this a lot of small different units very mobile units that can hide very well um, um so they should be quite all right i think okay um any final thoughts well, uh, let me use this opportunity to thank, thank to say thank you to all of our helpers for the tournament, uh, our local community again uh, rose to the occasion and uh, we have a lot of people helping us out uh, with um, our usuals, uh, Banya and Shimon and Igor from our local community helping with all the organization stuff. But also we have um, Kravat, who is one of the players in, in our community, who actually sponsored uh, three sets of terrain for, for the tournament, which is uh, really nice of him. Um, and uh, of course, uh, we also um, have some terrains from our colleagues uh, uh, from Bitgosht, which is, uh, which is great. And uh, I want to say thank, uh, thank you for them to them as well. And I'm, I'm really glad that uh, uh, we have uh, such a full house. Uh, 44 places were uh, the maximum that we um, uh, foreseen for the for the tournament. And uh, in less than uh, 24 hours, all the seats were already sold out. Uh, so it was super surprising, especially for some people who were a little bit slacking with uh, with their payments. <laughs> 
Um, and I hope that everybody will get here and uh, everybody will have fun. Uh, I, I definitely take pride in the fact that our tournament has this um, uh, perception of a chill tournament, not really, uh, you know, uh, very strict and, uh, mm, uh, you know, with a lot of drama, hopefully. <laughs> and uh, uh, I hope that we'll uh, keep that tradition going for this time as well. Uh, yeah, hopefully. Um, all right, thanks for coming in. Uh, I'm looking forward to the event as well. And uh, we'll see each other there. And yeah. our listeners, uh, as always, if you like our content, please like it, subscribe, hit the bell button. You know the drill. Uh, so that was Marcin uh, as our guest today. Uh, again, thanks and yeah. uh, bye bye. Thank you. Bye.